we are Team BioLink. Get ready for a déjà vu, uh, a quick, quick and uh, dirty one. Um, so uh, we are we've been hacking within this category, mapping nature and uh, biodiversity uh, in cities, uh, brought forward by uh, Contact Lab, and uh, we like uh, took a deep dive into into that project uh, called uh, Bunotour.app. And uh, we we gave it a little twist. So instead of um, um, mapping uh, biodiversity, we are trying to remap. So um, it's all about empowering architects and designers to design biodiverse projects by remapping habitational qualities. These qualities are collected by individuals all over Denmark using the, the bunatur.app tool. Uh, this uh, tool is based on the national method for mapping urban nature, developed by a wide range of stakeholders uh, as a pioneering project by Contact Lab right now. So um, we had a good talk with a, a representative from, from Contact Lab, and we were so lucky to get our hands on um, fresh data from, uh, from that app, which we um, like took a deep dive into. And um, we combi combined that with data we've uh, found uh, at uh, Aarhus University. They have made this um, uh, publication of uh, called a Plante Catalog, which is listing about 110 most like common species in, in Denmark. And then there are a lot of kind of properties um, related to those different uh, species in there. And the idea was to kind of uh, build up this uh, database just based on, let's say, this is a uh, local uh, focus in, in, on Denmark, uh, and then uh, um, combine that with a, a, a Rhino plugin, a Rhino tool that should kind of empower those those designers. So very quick uh, about the overall idea. It's uh, it's uh, about uh, uh, projects. It's project related, so a project has a certain size, and and within that project, um, there can be different zones of uh, biodiversity, which is related to the way that they are mapped uh, with the, the app, and um, and this uh, the, the tool is then about like um, being able to work, uh, let's say, uh, specific with those uh, different uh, zones, both uh, according to biodiversity, but also according to the landscaping of those uh, areas. So we defined uh, some KPIs. We, When we talked to uh, the people from Contact Lab, they are actually in the process right now, uh, kind of uh, figuring out how they can use all the data and how they can kind of maybe make them comp comp uh, comparable. So there's we, introducing, we are introducing this uh, Bu Natur factor which is a kind of a mathematical equation that is, uh, has to do with the size of uh, the kind of um, uh, um, the, the biozones in relation to the plot, the recreational potential, and then the variation of uh, species in there. And uh, most of this uh, data that we need for that uh, was already in the data set, but we had also to be a little bit creative um, and, and add some, some of the things we, we needed, but we didn't have access to. We are also looking into carbon absorption potential, uh, recre recreational potential, and uh, species variation. Yeah, so uh, technically we start in uh, Grasshopper and we connect to a database, something that proved a little bit uh, technically painful. Uh, and then uh, the user spawns the object, uh, trees, grass, flowers, uh, and then they start to drag them to, to the plot and they see the mathematical model update. Next. And then uh, when we dove a little bit uh, deeper in the database and started uh, testing it on a real project and to test if the mathematical model works, it, uh, if you look to the uh, plot in the, in the, in the bottom, it, it's, it's very clear that it doesn't because this one flower uh, is equivalent to an entire forest. Uh, so that model is uh, obviously wrong, but uh, it, it just highlights the, that you need uh, not just good data, but also a good way to interpret the data to tell the story. So we wanted then to kind of highlight this geometry, select it, and show it into Rhino. So that not only you get the aggregated statistics, but you get like the point specific for each object that you select. But Etoforms did not prove merciful with their uh, building up the like graphs, but we made a draft <laughs> in uh, pure, yeah, we just did with the D3 instead. So uh, basically you select your objects, you get up the data from your selection. We're looking up that towards a database and then we're getting these kind of graphs where you can see each specific object, how they provide into the recreational potential and CO2 absorption. So you can really like dive into these objects and zoom into them. So, and uh, the data flow is working. 
it's just not showing. <laughs> Then we use the same database to um, make a collage out of the different uh, species that we plant in the different biosomes, just to give a tool so you can actually see how they uh, match together. Yeah, and that's that's basically it. Yeah, thank you very much. Good for you, Tim. I, I just have a question. For when you use it, you have to start mapping yourself, every tree and bush and everything, or is do you imagine that this is pulled down? I just didn't get that. So, so right now, what we do is that we, uh, the idea is that we plot in a location, and then we will look up the database for um, plants that are um, reasonable to use in that area. And then you spawn those plants into into Rhino, yeah. it's like placeholder geometry, like a tree, tree looks like a tree, and then maybe it says uh, what kind of tree it is, and then the designer will then take that and move it into one of the biozones. And as soon as it is moved into the zone, then it's counted uh, on the uh, dashboards. Yeah. All right. Thank you. How structured is the data available? The Lim team spoke a little bit about it, but. Uh, Okay, to, to be honest, so the, the, the data we got from app, I don't think is supposed to uh, be used in, in a case like that. So the, the way that the mapping is happening is uh, through a kind of a series of questions to the user. So you, you install it on your app, on your phone, go to a certain place, and then you can register it as a habitat, and then you can start to um, um, do the mapping. And uh, uh, w we didn't really get what we wanted, so we get a lot of, like, uh, qualities related to the habitat, but not necessarily every single species. And uh, um, so so that's why we also uh, reached out to this uh, document from Aarhus University, because that was mm, much more kind of pointed to what we needed. Yeah. Um, uh, and so in, in the end, at the end of the day, I think it should be a combination. So what we learned from the Bunatua app is that uh, uh, like the w it's a good way to, let's say, uh, describe experience biodiversity, which was kind of the outcome of the app. Mm, but yeah. it didn't, it was not like um, uh, scientific uh, information. Yeah. Because mm. on the building side of things, it has matured, but still immature. Uh, everything outside the building, I feel, is even less mature. And I haven't seen any specific regulation or standards on how you define the environmental data point of a bush or a et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So very exciting field that I think we'll also start uh, experiencing maturing as we go more outside of the building envelope and, and the regulation. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of similarities to the other teams approach on giving this kind of a real time uh, feedback for the designer uh, on the biodiversity. How far away do you think this is from becoming an actual useful tool for designers? I mean, the, the reason why we like gave it this twist is that uh, it's basically built on top of a framework that we're using already for envi environmental analysis at, at the office. And we have we get approached all the time by our landscape department that they, they need some tools also because like biodiversity is everywhere, everyone is talking about it. And then there's only the biofactor, which is like obviously uh, has been uh, n not such a big success. So, uh, so that's why um, I think in terms of uh, implementation at the office, um, uh, keeping it in, in Rhino uh, like uh, as a part of our usual workflow is, is super useful for us because it took us quite some years at, to implement that in the first place. So now when we're building on top of that, it's, uh, it's much easier than to have people using it. So right away, tomorrow, Monday? Yeah, that's the <laughs> idea, that's the idea. But I mean, right now, as the other teams, it's, it's not, it's the information that is displayed is not correct. So Yeah. Good. No question. All right. Thank you.